we have been spending money abroad that not only is not helping our national security interests, I would argue is hurting our national security interests. We've been funding organizations um, that are actually doing everything they can to hurt our national security interests. You're watching Restoring America, where we shine a light on the fundamental values of this country and all the reasons why they're worth saving. This week, we're going to talk about the looming government shutdown and the underwriting question behind all of it. What should the government be spending our money on? I'm Kayla McGee-White, and this is Restoring America. Lawmakers are back on Capitol Hill and are facing a tight deadline. Funding for the federal government expires on September 30th, and without a new spending bill or a temporary continuing resolution, the government will shut down. But what should the government be spending our money on? This is the debate lawmakers are currently having. And it's an important question because the money being spent is ours as U.S. taxpayers. So what should the federal government's priorities be? And are there cuts that can be made to better serve those priorities? My guest today is going to help us answer all of those questions, specifically in regards to foreign policy. But before we get him, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and for more, head to WashingtonExaminer.com. With me today is Representative Mario diaz Balart, a member of the House Appropriations Committee and a U.S. Representative for Florida. Congressman, thanks so much for joining us. Great pleasure. Busy next couple of weeks ahead of you with the continuing resolution, the fight over federal spending coming up. You wrote a, an op-ed for the Washington Examiner talking about a bill that your subcommittee has introduced to fund certain foreign policy priorities. And you argue that if you are an ally or a friend of the United States, you're going to love the bill. But if you're an enemy, you won't. Can you explain why this is? Yeah, look, when, when we spend money abroad, I think it should be based on a very simple premise, the national security interests of the United States. And for way too long, we have been spending money abroad that not only is not helping our national security interests, I would argue is hurting our national security interests. We've been funding organizations um, that are actually doing everything they can to hurt our national security interests. So what we were able to do in, in my bill in the fiscal year 24 uh, uh, year is pass a bill, negotiate with the Senate, and get something passed which does much more with much less, much better with less money. That is the goal, to ensure the national security interests of the United States, help our allies confront our enemies, uh, and to do it with less money, which can be done. And you've said in the op-ed that you would actually save American taxpayers $7.6 billion if this bill is passed. What are some of the non-essential and even distracting programs and policies that you're proposing we cut from foreign policy spending? To build on what we did in the fiscal year 24 bill. For example, we eliminated in 24, it was, a, it was a bear to get done because the Senate didn't want to go along with this. But we eliminated, for example, a commission, the Commission of Inquiry Against Israel, part of the UN, that basically has been using our money to go after our ally, Israel. Uh, we've been funding um, the UN General Fund. I would argue that the UN is not helping our national security interests. They're actually helping our enemies. And so by being smart, by focusing on our allies, and by the way, by not being confused as to who our allies are and who our adversaries are, are, we proved in the fiscal year 24 bill that you can do more to help our allies, more to confront our enemies, and do it with much less money because precisely we are wasting money. We eliminate funding for the Wuhan Institute of Virology, something that shouldn't be controversial. Uh, we eliminated in the 24, and it's going to be a fight now, um, the, the, the funding, by the way, for example, uh, that that terrorists have been using in Gaza to, in essence, fight Israel, right? So there are so many areas, if we're willing to spend the time and not be confused as to who our allies are and what our national security interests are, there's so many specific areas that we can reduce or eliminate funding, use that funding to help our national security interests. And it's not theory. We did it in fiscal year 24. We can do more of it in fiscal year 24. And in your conversations with your colleagues, are you confident that this bill will pass as part of the next spending bill or part of the next continuing resolution? I'm proud that we already passed it out of the House. Uh, we have to start those negotiations in earnest with the Senate. The sooner that we start, the better it is for the country and, and, and for our national security interests. I'm very confident that we're going to have great victories, great success, because again, we're continuing, on, we're building on the success that we had in fiscal year 24. Many people thought, first place, that we couldn't pass it out of the House. 
and that if we pass it out of the House, that it was better than arrival in the Senate. I read that everywhere. Well, we proved the critics wrong, and I think we're going to do it again. And one of the things that I loved that you mentioned is that part of this is reorienting the way that we think about foreign policy to make sure that it is serving a specific purpose. Why is it so important to get our priorities straight, not just on foreign policy, but in terms of the overarching uh, bill of government spending? Well, because we're spending more money than we should. We're spending too much money. We, we have a huge spending problem in Washington. We can do better. Um, but we can do better and not kind of complain, oh my gosh, we have to spend less money, it's gonna hurt us. No, if we do it well, spending less money is actually better for the end product while we protect, obviously, our fiscal situation. And so it's doable, it's not theory. We did it in fiscal year 24, we can do it now in fiscal year 25. And then some things that, for example, you would think are no-brainers. Uh, we eliminate the funding for all of these special envoys, uh, these so-called czars, right? that the administration has created, which by the way, some of them have been really detrimental. Um, they haven't been confirmed by the Senate. So what I say is, look, if it's that important, have it confirmed by the Senate. Otherwise, you should not receive one penny of taxpayer money. These are all great points. Well, thanks so much for joining, Congressman. And for more exclusive interviews, breaking news, and conservative views, be sure to check out WashingtonExaminer.com.